Hello, my name is Giles Simond. I'm a partner with Evershed Sutherland based in London. Hello, my name is Maria Todorova and I'm a partner at Evershed Sutherland in the Atlanta office. Today we're going to give you an update on indirect taxes and the digital economy. So I understand there's been some recent uh, changes in the US, particularly a big case in the US Supreme Court. Can you tell us about that, Maria, please? Absolutely, Giles. The case you're referring to is South Dakota versus Wayfair. And the, the case de deals with the question of whether or not a state could impose a, state, a sales tax collection obligation on out-of-state vendor when that vendor has no physical presence in the state. Okay. Previously, the U.S. Supreme Court back in 1992 ruled that an out-of-state vendor has to have physical presence in a state in order for that state to require that vendor to collect sales tax on sales to customers in the state. With the evolution of the global economy and particularly the digital economy and the way companies do businesses today, we see a lot more cross-border transactions in the electronic commerce, not just in the United States, but globally. And so states perceive the physical presence rule as a way for, um, ele uh, for um, electronic commerce businesses to avoid paying sales taxes. So for over the last uh, two decades, states have tried to circumvent and even ignore the physical presence um, rule by enacting different re regimes such as click-through nexus rules, um, affiliate nexus rules to require vendors with no physical presence in the state to collect sales tax um, in that state. So that brings us to Wayfair. Huh? In Wayfair, the US Supreme Court directly um, overruled its previous precedent and physical presence is no longer required for a state to impose a sales tax uh, collection obligation. And while the court, the, interestingly, while the court uh, directly overruled its prior precedent, it did not set forth a clear rule, um, a clear nexus standard uh, going forward. So there are still a lot of questions that remain to, to be answered. But multinational businesses uh, need to be aware of this development and need to, um, my, because they might need to start collecting taxes okay. in the United States depending on which so state. So this is going to have a really big impact, not just for U.S. businesses, but across the globe. Absolutely. So if you're selling into the U.S. from, say, the U.K. or some other European country without any physical presence, you might, might have to pay tax, which you didn't before. Absolutely, because the Wayfair case establishes an economic nexus rule. Okay. So you no longer have to have physical presence. Okay, so that's really interesting because uh, in the rest of the world, we have uh, VAT and GST, which is obviously a tax based on consumption. And as the digital economy has become more and more prevalent, uh, the rules are beginning to change to make sure that tax is paid where the consumers are. So, for example, in Europe back in 2015, a new rule was introduced for B2C um, supply. So this is business to consumer, not B2B. So if you are a consumer of digital services, telecommunications, broadcasting, uh, there is a system which requires you now to pay the tax in every state where your consumers are based. Now that could mean that you'd have to register in every single state, but the EU introduced a rule which they call the mini one-stop shop. So you could be based in, say, the UK or France, whichever country that you choose, um, but you have to ensure that you collect the tax on behalf of all the different member states where your consumers are located. Um, and that is a development that's now been in place for a few years. But we're beginning to see other developments, particularly around uh, digital marketplaces, to ensure that tax is paid where consumption takes place. So, for example, recently in the UK, they introduced a new rule which requires those marketplaces to be jointly and severally liable for the tax paid on consumption. So that's obviously to encourage uh, vendors who use those marketplaces to make sure that they are complying with the local rules uh, in the EU. And we have seen this now in other states as well, in, the, in Australia, India, and different states now throughout the world are adapting to the digital economy. Absolutely, very interesting. And um, it sounds like we have a lot of interesting issues to deal with yeah. in the indirect tax uh, um, I think there'll be, uh, there will be more um, updates, I'm sure, that we can do. Thank you for joining us today. For more information on indirect tax compliance in the digital economy and other bottom line videos, please visit evershed-sutherland.com.